friends, it's Jessie and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing the eyeshadow palette collection video. These are honestly some of my favorite videos to binge watch here on YouTube, so of course I wanted to contribute my own collection. Um, I will be breaking this up into two parts simply because my collection is too large. Honestly, I don't know how many palettes specifically I have. I want to say it's over 100, under 200, somewhere in that range. I know that's a big range. Um, but, uh, I have worked in the beauty industry for several years now. A lot of this stuff is stuff that I've either been given from past jobs, um, stuff that I've bought with a pro discount. As a general rule of thumb, I try not to purchase anything full price if I don't have to. I try and always find a good deal or take my pro discount advantage in that area. So in this first part, you'll see more of my higher end or prestige type palettes. And then the second part will be more of my affordable and bulky palettes. A um, couple disclaimers. One, like I said, I have worked in the beauty industry for years now. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of how I've accumulated so much stuff. No person needs this much makeup. Don't, I don't want anyone to feel like they have to have this much makeup because this is honestly ridiculous. Um, two, I have a compulsive shopping problem. So... I do like to purchase new things as they come out. It is something awful that I'm working on, but it is what it is. Three, please do not ask me to send you anything. Um, I've never had a problem with that on any of my videos. I do know those types of comments are very popular on these types of videos. Um, I do frequently pull out things that I'm no longer interested in using or no longer using and anything that is gently used or pretty much new. I do list all my Poshmark, which I will link in the description below if you're interested in checking out any of the palettes I'm selling. Without further ado, let's jump into the collection. All of my eyeshadow palettes are stored in the bottom of my Alex 9 drawers. So they're in these bottom four drawers. So it's kind of organized. Uh, the top drawer is more of my luxury, like high-end palettes, ones I reach for all the time. This one has more of my prestige palettes, still on the higher end side, but definitely not affordable. Um, down here, this is all my ColourPop craziness, uh, as well as some miscellaneous palettes back there. Um, and in the bottom, this is where I keep all of my bulky, like my Morphe and Jeffree Star palettes. So in this first part, I think we're just gonna focus on the top two drawers. So I'll go through these, I'll pull them out and we'll talk about them. So this is the top drawer. A lot of these palettes are my current go-tos or my favorite formulas. Um, like the Melt formula is one of my favorites. And a lot of these palettes were also gifts, um, mostly for my husband. He buys me palettes that I love when I convince him to. So let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off, I have the Natasha Denona Love Palette. As you can see, she's extremely dirty. I really like this palette. I think the colors are gorgeous. This to me is more of a winter palette. Uh, so come winter time, I definitely wanna pull this one out and use it again. Um, but I really like these two shimmers, Giving and Pure Love. They're some of my favorite shimmers. Oh, look, at, there's me. Um, some of my favorites to use. The Natasha Denona Bronze Palette, another one of the mini Natasha Denona palettes. I really do like this one as well. Color Story is super cute. This one I think I'm going to pull out for my Shop My Stash in fall. Uh, I'm already planning ahead a little bit, um, but I am excited to use some of these shades again. They really remind me of like fall leaves. The Natasha Denona, I think this is the Cranberry Palette. Yeah. Starting off strong with a casualty. This is the Natasha Denona Cranberry Palette. I don't even know why that just like exploded on me. Um, this is a very special palette. This was the first palette I bought when I moved to LA. This was my birthday gift to myself. Couldn't afford anything, but made this work because I wanted it, so. My first Natasha Denona palette was the Tropic palette, and if we're honest, this is probably my least favorite out of all of my Natasha Denona palettes. I do really like this shade, Vintage Taupe. It is one of my favorite crease shades for just a nice, easy, um, simple, <laughs> minimal makeup look. I really do like that. These uh, bottom shades I was really excited for, but to me they were just a little bit lackluster. Um, I can't bear to part with it though because it was my first Natasha palette and I do love her formula. The Natasha Denona Trio Chrome palette. This is the first Natasha palette that I purchased. Um, I went out specifically 
uh, to buy as soon as it came out. And I love this palette. I use this one a lot right after we moved to Utah. Um, so a lot of these kind of shades down here I used for just kind of a simple no makeup makeup or kind of like grungy minimal makeup look. Um, I really like Androdite as an inner corner shade. I think it's really beautiful. And these uh, duochrome, triochrome situations are stunning. I really do like this palette and it makes me feel more creative when I use it. I feel like my makeup um, looks always turn out amazing with this palette. Let's get this guy out of the way. This is the Marc Jacobs Terrific Palette. I did review this on my channel, so if you're interested, I will link that in the cards. Um, but overall, this palette just did not wow me. I was super excited about it, and it just did not do it for me. Um, but I think as a brand, Marc Jacobs completely dissolved, which is a shame because I did like a lot of the products from him. Maybe I'll pull this into my Panda's Eyeshadows project and get some more use out of it. I have a couple palettes from Kaleidos. This is the Escape Pod palette, and this one is super pretty for spring. It makes me think of like Mardi Gras, like all the colors, the purples and the greens together. I do love purple and green together. I think they're a gorgeous combo. Super duper in love with this palette. I feel like I don't use it enough, but that is why I'm doing some of these panning projects to try and share some love on my palettes. And then of course we have the Club Nebula palette, which was in collaboration with Angelica. This one is super pretty too, more of the grungy tones. This is like Kaleidos' take on subculture and I am here for it. This is what subculture wished it could be. I am obsessed with these tones. I think it's gorgeous. Can't wait to use this more in the winter. Let's go ahead and pull my Melt palettes out. So the first one we have here is the Rust palette. I believe I've done a video on this one as well, which I will link in the cards. One of my favorite go-to neutral palettes, this yellow is everything. Um, these shimmers kind of all pull the same in my opinion, Tarnish and Redox. I feel like look very similar on the lid, but overall a great grungy neutral palette. The Vita and Muerte palettes, these were for holiday a couple years ago, I think in 2019, it was the year I got married. This is the Vita palette. I really do like the tones in this palette. Um, and Muerte as well. I think they're so gorgeous. I always forget to use them. Um, I do want to reach for them a little more often, but these are super, super pretty. The Melt Blueprint palette. I will be honest, I have never used this. I purchased this when it came out with the intent of doing a video uh, with it, and I think I've only used this beaming shade as like an inner corner highlight maybe. You can kind of see just a little touch there. But I do want to pull this out and play with it a little bit. I am drawn to these types of tones. I just feel like I'm not sure how to work with them. Um, I am just now in my life starting to dabble in darker, deeper makeup looks. Um, so I think this will be a fun one to play around with. The Beetlejuice palettes, if you know me, Halloween is my all-time favorite holiday. I actually got married on Halloween, so of course I'm going to want to pick up anything remotely Halloween themed. So the Beetlejuice uh, palettes, this is the Waiting Room palette. Um, I love these. These are so pretty, and I get compliments whenever I wear these palettes, especially this one. I wore this one a lot too right after we moved because I pulled it out, um, and I got so many compliments from coworkers, clients, just everybody loved my looks. And this one is the Recently Deceased palette. This is more of the greeny purple one, and I did do a video on this one as well. I really do like this palette. These are just so fun and so cute. I wish Melt would do more stuff like this, like more kind of the creepy themes. This is my one and only Pat McGrath palette. I did have another one, but I decluttered it. It's up on my Poshmark, um, but this is the Divine Rose 2 palette. I spent an arm and a leg on this thing, but it is gorgeous. I absolutely love this. This shimmer right here, stunning. I actually did um, makeup for a bridal magazine shoot using this palette. And the last palette I have in the store, this is the Lunar Beauty Moonspell palette. This was a gift from my husband. So, of course, the creepy theme. It's all dirty because I wiped it down, but I love the colors in this one as well. One of my favorite fall palettes to use.
Okay, buckle in because this is the second and probably most stuffed full drawer in my collection. So this, like I said, houses all of my high-end palettes that aren't necessarily considered luxury like Natasha or Pat McGrath. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. My first eyeshadow palette ever is my Modern Renaissance from Anastasia. As you can see, she is very beat up. And she isn't as loved as I would have liked to see from her being my oldest palette. Uh, you can definitely tell a lot of these lighter shades have been used and abused, but I could never part with this. I think this is like almost five years old already. It's so old. Um, my subculture palette, I do have the original subculture. I went out and bought this on launch day. As you can see, I have stabbed it with my nail a few times. Um, pretty good palette, not the best quality. Um, but the tones I think are pretty, especially for the time that it came out, uh, definitely something unseen. So I do appreciate it for its artistic value. Soft Glam. If I had to start my collection over and repurchase all of my palettes, this I think would be one of the ones that I would go out and purchase first. It is just my staple neutral palette, my go-to. You can definitely see a lot of these shades have been well-loved uh, for sure. Um, and I think this is going to be a pan that palette for me next year. I'm kind of dabbling in some panning projects and I think it'd be a lot of fun to try and use this up. I do really, really like this palette. Anastasia Prism. This was a holiday palette from, I want to say like 2018. Uh, I've used it a little bit, not one of my most used palettes by any means. Um, but I did play with this one a lot, especially while I was in beauty school. I used some of these shades of Cyrus, Saturn. Um, I did come up with some looks that I really like. I feel like just looking at this, it just kind of confuses me, the color story. A lot of the shades are very similar, like Dimension and Osiris and Throne are all relatively similar, kind of in that same deep blue-green realm. Um, the neutrals are pretty basic. I feel like they could have done a little bit more unique neutrals, um, but I think this one does challenge me creatively, so I do like that. Let's go ahead and talk about Miss Norvina, another well-loved palette in my collection. As you can see, a lot of my Anastasia palettes are very well-loved. They are some of my favorite formulas, and I travel with these all the time. Um, I do really like the color stories in here. Uh, this is just one of the most fun, easy spring palettes I've ever had. I really love the shade Celestial. Wild Child is a bit uh, lackluster in terms of pigment. It's very pretty, but not really the payoff that you see in the pan without building it up. I really do love this palette though, super pretty. Riviera from Anastasia. This is currently in my Panless Eyeshadows project. I'm working on Seychelles. Um, I went out on my lunch break in beauty school and purchased this palette because I have this weird like OCD thing where I have to collect all of the Anastasia, what are these, like the 14 pan palettes. I have to get all of her standard ones. I don't think they've come out with any recently. Um, this is a fun color story. I have done some looks I really like with this palette, but not one I typically gravitate towards. Sultry, probably my all time favorite palette ever. I love this palette. I just think the looks always look so put together and so nice and so clean and all of the shimmers are just very complimentary with the uh, mattes that they put in. The bloom shade up here, the red kind of throws me off a little bit, but everything else I really, really like in this palette um, is definitely one of my most loved, obviously, palettes. Look at Twig. Poor Twig. That's like my favorite matte eyeshadow ever. I'm so sad. I don't think they sell it as a single, but this is just such a great palette. Anastasia and Alyssa Edwards, they did this like little phase where they came out with a ton of collaboration palettes in a short period of time and me being a RuPaul Drag Race junkie had to pick this up. Uh, literally haven't really touched it. I've used it a few times. I've done some rainbow brows. I've done some kind of mauve glam looks, but relatively untouched. The Jackie Ina palette, I know this is like everyone's holy grail now. I think this should be a staple palette. I so sad they discontinued it and it was limited edition. The shimmers in here are just phenomenal. The mattes are amazing. I love that you have this like neutral side, but you also have this like pinky purple side. I've done so many fun looks with this and every single time I wear this, I get compliments. Amazing palette, 
packaging is gorgeous, right up my alley. The Carly Bible palette, honestly, this was not one that stood out to me as one I needed to get, but my OCD got the best of me and I had to have the whole set, so of course I had to go out and purchase it. Um, the only time I ever use this is when I force myself to use this. I never really gravitate towards it. Um, honestly, it just kind of sits there until I think, hey, I haven't used that in a while, maybe I should use it. So. I do really like this mandala shade and some of these shimmers aura and my angels are really pretty um, but I feel like it's just such a basic palette honestly I feel like it's not even the shades in here are very basic it's like a combination of basic shades and the Amrezy palette this is pink and glittery and all things good this is what she looks like super pretty palette um, I did purchase this at a very difficult time in my life um, and so because of that, I feel like I just never gravitated towards using it ever. Um, I do feel like some of these shades are kind of repeats. New Yorker and OG are a little bit of a repeat for me. Um, some of these shimmers I could do without the pressed glitters, but overall, I think great quality. Barb is one of my all-time favorite shimmer shades ever. If you've ever seen Barb, it is just gorgeous. Nice palette. My last remaining Tarte palettes, I've decluttered pretty much all but these Tarte palettes. So this is the Man Eater. This one I kept because I used it for work. I kept it in my car as my work palette. I do work as a hairstylist, so makeup is mandatory in my dress code. Uh, and this is just one of those easy throw a shade in the lid on in the crease. Tarte Linen Bloom, again, one of my first palettes ever. I really just loved this palette. I used this a lot my senior year of high school. Um, mostly just these shades because I was too scared to use anything deeper and didn't quite understand makeup theory back then. But funny girl, I used to exclusively use this as my shimmer all the time. And the Tarte and Aspen Ovard palette. This is another one that I'm using in my Pan Those Eyeshadows project. I'm working on the shade Brilliance. Um, I purchased this because to support Aspen Ovard. I really did like her growing up. I thought she was a great role model. Um, haven't heard too much about her recently. I haven't really been keeping up with anybody, to be honest. Um, but I do remember liking this palette the few times I did use it. It's just very basic and easy to use. Let's tackle some Urban Decay palettes. So right here up front, I have the Urban Decay Prince palette. Um, this, they have two different ones and I'm not sure which one this is. Couldn't tell you, but this is what it looks like. I did purchase this because I grew up in Minnesota. So Prince, of course, was our only claim to fame. And I just felt like I needed a little piece of Prince in my life. So um, haven't touched it yet. I do want to use this in like a get ready with me or a TikTok or something. Uh, try it out. Uh, but this was the palette out of the two that stood out to me more. Um, and you have like Prince's little eye there. Super cute color story. I've heard mixed reviews on this, so I'm kind of curious to see how it performs. The Urban Decay Beached Palette. This is one of those palettes that I have and I'm convinced nobody else has ever had this palette in their life. Um, I can't even tell you how many times I've questioned if this palette is even real or not because I've never seen anyone else have it. Um, but this is what she looks like. It's just a little summer palette they did a few years ago. Um, really nice quality. Wish there was more mattes, but overall it's a pretty good palette. The Urban Decay uh, Naked Palettes. Uh, the Wild West. This is my newest naked palette. Um, I've been using this palette a lot recently just because I'm starting to gravitate more towards like these fall tones, fall colors. And this is quite the palette. I'm not mad about the quality of the mattes. Shimmers I think could be a little better, but overall I think this is a nice palette. The Naked Smoky. This is another older Urban Decay palette. I don't think this is available anymore. Um, pretty much held on to this because it's my only true smoky palette. If we're being technical, um, I don't think I have any other palettes that are marketed as smoky palettes. Um, but this is a pretty nice quality palette from what I remember. I just don't typically go for those grungy, deeper looks. It's something I'm trying to get into more, but for now. The Naked Ultraviolet palette. This is again another one of those newer Urban Decay palettes. The quality in this I don't think is nearly as good as some of the others. A lot of these purple shades take so much building up. It's almost not even worth it in my opinion, um, but I do love looking at this and I love the color story and when I am in the mood to put in the effort, I think it always turns out really nice. 
Naked Cherry. I have so many fond memories with my Naked Cherry palette. Um, this I got when I was working at Ulta, so I did get this palette before it even came out. I got the sneak peek. I got the very first palette that they ever like put out, and I just love this palette. I have so many good memories. I wore this palette to go break up with a boyfriend, so of course I always remember it for that. Um, and I just, I love this palette. With every ounce of my being, this palette just brings me so much joy. My Naked 3 palette, this one I wore a lot when me and my husband started dating, and I actually wore it on my wedding day, um, just for that simple no makeup makeup look that everyone wants so badly to achieve. Very, very pretty, super soft and subtle. Just love this palette. The Urban Decay Naked Heat, um, one of my first naked palettes, if not my first naked palette, and I do really like this one still. Lumber was one of my favorite shimmers. You can tell which shades that I used a lot um, when I first got this palette. It's all these like front shades. Um, occasionally would dip into cayenne, but hardly ever dipped any, into anything deeper. Uh, pretty nice palette. This is another one I want to pull out for fall. Let's tackle my two dose of colors palette. This is Snow Angels. Um, I think this was a holiday palette from a couple years ago. I could be wrong. Um, just very simple matte, matte mauves, matte pink, cranberry blue, pretty basic. And then the dose of colors X. I love Sarah He. I literally never know how to say that. Um, this is another palette I'm working on my Pan Those Eyeshadows project. Um, I love the color story in this. Hardly ever use it, but these shimmers are just out of this world. Next, I have some miscellaneous palettes. I've decluttered the majority of my Kylie palettes, but I do have a few left. So the first one is the Nice palette. Um, this is a pretty decent palette. I did do a video on this literally years ago. If you want to see like baby me do a makeup video, yeah, that's kind of cringy, but I will link it for your curiosity and viewing pleasure. Um, pretty cute palette. I would like to use it again and kind of see how it compares to some of my current makeup tastes. I do remember loving the shade of Blizzard though. Chill Baby, this was another holiday palette. Um, I am so pissed off because for the longest time I didn't realize that I had gotten a fluke and these bottom two shades were the same. And by the time I realized it and reached out, they didn't have it anymore. They weren't making it, so I wasn't able to get a replacement. Um, but the color story in this is pretty... It just pissed me off for the longest time, so I never wanted to use it because every time I opened it, I got frustrated. But overall, really cute color story. I can't remember if I did a video on this one or not, um, but this was a really pretty palette too. The Love Palette from Kylie. This was a Valentine's Day collection, I believe. Uh, this has just a lot of really bright pinks and kind of neutral shades. Looks a lot more used than I remember it. I don't quite remember using it that much, but I guess I did use it quite a bit. Uh, really pretty shimmers, and I love the hot pink. My Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette. This is one of my older palettes. I use this one a lot in high school. The pans are so densely pressed that it hardly looks like I used it at all because of just the sheer amount of pigment and product pressed into these. I do love this palette, and I remember that this one was such a big deal in the makeup world forever ago. Everybody had this palette. Dominique Cosmetics Celestial Storm, another one I convinced my husband to get me. Um, conveniently left my wallet at home the day I went to go get this, so he so generously offered to purchase it for me. Um, I really like the palette uh, as a whole. I think it's a great combination of neutrals and bright shimmers and fun colors. Overall, a really fun palette um, that pushes my creativity and I couldn't ask for anything more. I have a couple uh, miscellaneous palettes. This is the Huda Beauty Pastels Mint, um, the only Huda Beauty palette I have currently. I've decluttered the rest of them, but I haven't really played around with this too much. I got this because these shimmer shades with the swirls really intrigued me for whatever reason. Um, so I purchased this like during a Sephora sale and I haven't tried it too much yet, but hopefully soon. The Violet Boss Flamingo Palette. I purchased this at Disneyland of all places. Again, right after I moved to LA, I totally went on a shopping spree, treated myself a little too much, um, but this is one of my makeup purchases and it has a good memory to it. So don't know how much you guys heard or what you missed because my phone keeps 
going in and out, but uh, Too Faced uh, Gingerbread Spice Palette and the Gingerbread Extra Spicy. I don't want to record my thoughts on them for the fourth time, so we're going to just leave it at that. Um, the Too Faced White Chocolate Bar Palette, super, super pretty. Hardly ever used it, honestly. Um, quality isn't as good as some of the other holiday palettes, but it's not terrible. The Too Faced Semi-Sweet Chocolate Bar Palette. This one has obviously been abused. I did do a video on this one forever ago as well. Really pretty color story. It is no longer available. And honestly, now looking at it, it's so basic. I don't know why I was so like enthralled by it, um, but it smells amazing. I used it so much. I could never part with it just for all the memories that I have wearing this palette. The Too Faced Sweet Peach Palette, another one of my OG palettes. I, when I started collecting makeup right out the get-go, I had several palettes, so a lot of my palettes um, don't have too much wear and tear on them. I am so light-handed with my makeup that it's hard to see a dent anyway, um, but this one, a lot of good memories with this one as well. The Too Faced Life's a Festival Palette. This, I don't even know where <laughs> to begin with this. It is just a hot mess, like this is insane. Lots of shimmers, lots of crazy colors, and it's blinding you. It's like just so fascinating to look at it in the camera, but um, I haven't really used this aside from just spontaneously deciding I want to use one of these shimmer shades. Cute packaging, has the unicorn. And last but not least from Too Faced, we have the Too Faced Natural Lust Palette. This is super, super pretty. Every neutral you could ever imagine in here. I actually won a makeup award using this palette. I did a Hanging Gardens of Babylon inspired makeup look um, and won an award when I was in cosmetology school. So that was pretty cool. Um, aside from that though, I don't think I've ever really reached for this for personal use, so. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'll see you guys all in the next one.